will discuss about ECG. This is by far the most important topic for all the medicos. Sometimes you get confused after seeing the ECG. For example, like this, and you think, is this normal? Should I call the cardiologist? So, in today's video, I'll try to make ECG very simple in only 10 steps, and in the end, you'll be able to diagnose majority of heart rhythms on your own. So, let's start. ECG or electrocardiogram. It is the graphical representation of electrical activity going on in the heart. Now, how to read an ECG in just 10 steps? Before that, we need to check the calibration or speed of the machine which is normally set at 25 mm per second. In most of the books on ECG, first step is to calculate rate. But before calculating the rate, you should know whether the rhythm is regular or not. I'll tell you the reason why, uh, when I'll discuss about the rate. So we'll discuss the ECG interpretation in this manner. Rhythm, Rate, Axis, P wave, PR interval, Q wave, QRS complex, QT interval, ST segment and T wave. Now step 1 is rhythm. To check the rhythm, we check the RR interval. As in this ECG, RR interval are equal and there is P wave before every QRS complex. So this is a normal sinus rhythm. In this second ECG, as you can see the RR interval is not equal at any time and there is no identifiable P wave. The rhythm is irregularly irregular which occurs most commonly in atrial fibrillation. Now look at this ECG. Normal regular rate with regular drop beat. So rhythm is regularly irregular which is seen most commonly in second degree heart block type 2. Step 2. It is to calculate heart rate from an ECG. If the rhythm is regular in ECG, heart rate is calculated by 300 divided by large boxes between RR interval. And this is a ECG graph paper. If the speed or calibration of ECG machine is 25 mm per second, then one small square corresponds to 0 0.04 second and one big square to 0.2 second. So large uh, 5 large squares is equal to 1 second. Now in this normal sinus rhythm ECG, there are 4 large boxes between RR interval. So the rate will be 300 divided by 4. That comes out to be 75 beats per minute. But if the rhythm is irregular on ECG as in atrial fibrillation, rate is calculated by number of R waves in 6 seconds multiplied by 10 so as to get rate per minute. So in this ECG strip, there are 9 R waves or 9 QRS complexes. So the rate comes out to be 90 beats per minute. So 300 divided by RR interval formula is valid only if the rhythm is regular. That is why we should first see the rhythm and then should calculate the rate accordingly. Now step 3 is to calculate the axis. First of all, normal cardiac axis is from minus 30 to plus 110 degree. And to know about the axis, we first need to know about the 12 lead ECG. There are 3 bipolar leads which are lead 1, lead 2 and lead 3. And 3 unipolar leads which are augmented voltage lead that is AVR, AVL and AVF. And there are 6 chest leads which are from V1 to V6. Now to calculate the axis, most commonly we use perpendicular leads that is lead 1 and AVF. In this ECG, Net QRS complex in lead 1 and in AVF are positive. So if we plot these positive deflection on this diagram, we will get a vector in the normal cardiac axis range. So this is a normal axis ECG. And if net QRS is positive in lead 1 and negative in AVF, the net vector will be in left axis deviation range. Lead 2 will also be negative in left axis deviation. And if net QRS is negative in lead 1, and positive in AVF. The net vector will be in right axis deviation range. Now look at this ECG. Net QRS in lead 1 is positive and net QRS is negative in AVF. So this ECG showing left axis deviation or LAD. And you can remember this by a mnemonic left leaves where net deflection in lead 1 and AVF are in opposite direction or as if they are leaving. Whereas, in this ECG, net QRS 
is negative in lead 1 and positive in AVF. So this is a right axis deviation and you can remember this by a mnemonic right returns. Step 4 is P wave. So first of all see whether P wave is present or not. If present see the morphology. For P wave morphology we will look at lead 2 and V1. Height of normal P wave is less than 2.5 mm in limb leads and less than 1.5 mm in precordial leads and the width should be less than 0.12 seconds. In this ECG as you can see in lead 1 P wave are tall and, uh, tall and peaked. These are called as P pulmonale which is seen in right atrial enlargement and if P waves are bifid or have a notch in between it is called as P mitral. Remember M, M shape for mitral which is seen in left atrial enlargement. Step 5 is PR interval. It is from the start of P wave to the start of Q wave. That is why some call it as PQ interval. Normally it is 0.12 to 0.2 seconds that is 3 to 5 small squares and it is prolonged in AV blocks. Reduced in WPW syndrome in which there is an accessory pathway which conducts impulses faster than the normal producing shorter PR interval and PR interval is depressed in pericarditis cases. Step 6 it is Q wave. It is called pathological if more than two small squares deep and usually indicate current or past MI. As you can see deep Q waves in inferior leads 2, 3 and AVF. So this is ECG of old inferior wall MI. Step 7 is QRS complex. Normally it is 0.08 to 0.12 seconds that is 2 to 3 small squares. It is widened in ventricular arrhythmias which can be ventricular ectopic or ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation or any pathology below bundle of hills. QRS is also widened in bundle branch blocks. In RBBV, there is M pattern in V1 and W pattern in V6. You can remember it with a mnemonic marrow where double R is for RBB and M in V1, W in V6. Similarly, you can remember ECG of LBB by a mnemonic William where W pattern in V1 and M pattern in V6 is present. Step 8 it is QT interval. It is from the start of Q wave to the end of T wave. As a rule of thumb, normal QT is less than half the preceding RR interval. An abnormally prolonged QT is associated with increased risk of ventricular arrhythmias, especially torsade de pointers. Step 9 ST segment. It is the flat isoelectric section of ECG between the end of S wave that is the J point and beginning of T wave. As in this ECG, you can see ST elevation which could be commonly due to acute myocardial infarction or in pericarditis. If ST elevation is present in V1, V2 then it is septal wall MI. If in V3, V4 then anterior wall MI. If present in lead 1 plus AVL and V5, V6 then lateral wall MI and if present in 2, 3 AVF then it suggests inferior wall MI. ST segment depression is seen in NSTEMI, myocardial ischemia, posterior MI and many other causes. Coming on to last step that is T wave. It is upright in all leads except AVR and V1. Tall, narrow, symmetrically peaked T waves are commonly seen in hyperkalemia. Broad, asymmetric, peaked or hyperacute T waves they are seen in early stages of STEMI or ST elevation MI. Inverted T waves are seen in myocardial ischemia or infarction or can be in ventricular hypertrophy. Now let's discuss about how the ECG looks like in hypertrophy. In left ventricular hypertrophy add deepest S wave in V1 or V2 more than 35 mm then LVH is present whereas in right ventricular hypertrophy there will be right axis deviation R by S ratio more than 1 in V1 and less than 1 or equal to 1 in V5 or V6. 
and also R wave in V1 is more than 7 mm. This is the simplest criteria to detect RVH. So this is all about ECG. Always think of these 10 steps in this manner and you will be able to detect majority of arrhythmias very easily. And guys, if you like the content and information of this video, do like, share and subscribe to the channel.